My name is Boyd Varty. I think of myself as an artist of experience. My passion is to create transformational experiences for myself and others as a way to explore what it means to truly live. My central exploration is to live on what I would call the track of your life. To me, this is to live courageously towards the discovery of what you are called to and to what life asks of you. So much of how I live has been informed by my passion as an animal tracker. I'm following the trail of my own life and reporting back. This show is a daily broadcast from a treehouse on the Londolozi Game Reserve in the wild eastern part of South Africa. Londolozi is a 14,000 hectare wilderness reserve adjacent to the Kruger National Park. The land is home to lion, leopard, rhino, elephant and buffalo, as well as a variety of other animals. I am your host, Boyd Varty. My goal is to spend 40 days and 40 nights alone in the wilderness to explore the archetype of the mystic in nature and hone my skills as a tracker. These are my daily stories. Day 4. Safety 3rd. Journal entry. Animals seen so far from the treehouse. Elephant, buffalo, bushbuck, inyala, giraffe, rhino, and monkeys. I hope to see a leopard down on the sandbank one evening. I hope to find the tracks of a pride of lions to follow. Status report is that it's still hell of a damp. Last night, spiders wove beautiful webs all through the tree and the riverine forest around the camp. Dewy tripwires enclose the dirt road onto the camp. And I have to wonder if they are maybe weaving me in. I also wonder if it's the dew on the strands that draws my attention today to what is always there. I'm astounded by how perfectly symmetrical fractal patterns of sacred geometry emerge out of the nature of the arachnid heart. What order of emergent order weaves webs through spiders? Today I've decided I will run a distance. I will run through the bush like people have always done to hunt between villages, to pass messages. Certainly there are tricks to running in the African bush. And I come by this with years of experience, collaboration, hours doing it, amazing mentors, conversations, and a couple of mistakes. For starters, you should run where it's open. Train yourself to run with your head up and on a swivel, not staring at the road in front of you like most treadmill runners do. You should watch, watch the outside shoulder of the road, which is exactly where a black mamba would lie. And you should try and avoid two tracks, dirt roads with grassy centers. Again, snakes. Generally, I like to run when it's hot and animals, particularly lions and leopards, are less active to avoid surprise encounters. You should slow down when approaching waterholes, where any number of large game might be suddenly startled. All of this is running through my head as I set out on my daily run. Now, as someone who has guided many people into nature, I think that safety occurs in three phases. The first phase, and probably the most important, is a mindset and an awareness that you live in long before a dangerous situation. It's a voice that is always whispering inside of you. It says, forward thinking, route planning, risk assessment, contingencies, knowing the terrain, local knowledge. It's always whispering. The second phase of safety is actually how you handle the dangerous situation itself should one arise. The third phase is the safety itself which is a result of the first two phases, hence safety third. Mostly the first phase done well, a safety mindset, will mitigate for the need for the second and arrive you straight at safety third. What's on my mind today as I set out is that in my experience, 
overcast conditions can mean hippos out of the water feeding, which is something they don't do when the sun is out and it's hot. Experience, local knowledge. I'm aware that in a few sections where the brush thickens, I must change my pace and walk, adapt to the terrain, forward thinking. I plan a route and choose a time of day and terrain that would avoid elephants. Mitigation. With all of this done right, I have the opportunity to run for hours. It's beautiful, silent, aware. I run on white sandfold crest strewn with silver leaf terminalia and grey stem marula trees. I run past herds of zebra and impala. Sweat is pouring off me. I run past a warthog wallowing in a, in a puddle. There is a great joy to being out alone. The reserve is so empty of people right now. Almost as I'm thinking that, I see Frank Hubisi from the land care team of the reserve driving an old Land Rover, and from a distance he calls to me in Shangan. He shouts. Hello there, friend. You're staying alone out in the bush. I call back. I'm meeting with spirit. Frank seems to understand. I run through the heat with a clear mind. It's as if a great energy current has come up under me. My attention to safety is obviously not just for me, but it's also for the animals. I run past a herd of kudu, and for a moment they run with me. I turn my head to the side, and one bull is framed, high-horned on a termite mound, while the others bound alongside me. I'm learning that running can also be mindful. Breath, footfall, breath, footfall, breath, footfall. I think of the idea that we live inside the mind of God. Am I then running through the mind of a wild God? In fact, as I think about this, I realize that safety in the bush, whether alone or guiding others, has been a place where I have practiced mindfulness for years without knowing it. Now I approach a thicker area. Slow down. I know there is a waterhole nearby. Awareness. Suddenly, an oxpecker, which is, a, which is birds that sit on big game, alarm and fly up out of some thick shade some 50 yards ahead of me. The birds alert me well in advance, and I'm able to indeed avoid a sleeping hippo. I quickly check the wind, understanding the environment. I quickly assess my escape routes, experience. I become aware of natural barriers I could use for cover, contingencies. None of this is done with fear. It's natural to me. Practice. I learned from great guides and trackers the way of what I would call slow, deliberate awareness, assessment, and then action. In great guides, the reaction to danger is paradoxical, instant, yet through presence, deliberate and ordered. I'm realizing that I need to take this to other parts of my life. The hippo stood up, alerted by the alarms of the birds. It cocks its head to listen. It's not yet aware of me, only that the birds have startled. I stand still for a moment. Slow down. The hippo, then calm, walks off deeper into the thicket. I move to give the animal a wide berth. The highest form of martial arts is always the avoidance of conflict. In this way, animals are truly black belts. Out here, conflict is often a last resort, used only when boundaries have been in some way fundamentally crossed. As I come back to the camp, I'm careful not to drop into the mindset of, oh, well, I'm back in camp now, I'm fine. I remain alert. The idea of the camp is just that, an idea. In fact, in Africa, most of the dangerous encounters that happen and injuries happen when people are in camp. My run has been made safe through awareness, through practice. 
through the safety mindset. The safety mindset is so different from the need to be safe. Safety is a mindset and that is also so different from the need to be safe. I suspect in life we have forgotten the first and been a bit overrun by the second. I'm inclined to think that we don't need safe spaces. We need to find out how to go beyond safe spaces with more awareness. A safety mindset allows you to go where life is, beyond the world's definition of safe, into the alive, but not naively, wisely. In the camp, I'm just careful. I'm careful reaching into the woodpile. I take care for scorpions that might come out of a log that's in the fire. I'm mindful that I'm living in a tree, and that's also where snakes live. There is no fear in it, just awareness and understanding. And if I'm honest with myself, I can't say that for other places in my life. There are definitely places where there is still fear instead of awareness and understanding. The wild has a way. If you know it, it's so honest and clear. Out here, it makes such perfect sense to me. But there are places inside of me that I know less well. And I should imagine that there are wildernesses in all of our lives. How can we go deeper into them, creating more safety as we go? Developing a safety mindset, awareness, learning the terrain, asking for local knowledge, taking time to develop experience, going slowly, learning its ways. My friend Josh Waitskin has a way of transferring high levels of competency from one area of his life into other areas. It's as if he understands the dynamics of competence itself. This is what I must now do. Transfer my safety mindset in the wilderness to uncharted places in other parts of my life. Relationships, new endeavors, creative projects, life transitions, new beginnings. There's so much I have to learn. But I have a way I know. I think there is an art form to creating safety in the uncharted. I know people who do this. All of my mentors have had an uncanny ability to create safety around them, but also transformation. How do I become that person through all dimensions of my life? How could you? Not needing to be safe, but willing to go with an open alertness and guidance into the place beyond safety where life happens safely. This is where I must go. My friend Tara sent a message to me via the tree mail that said, has the thought ever crossed your mind that you might not feel called to return? Well, Tara, I can tell you that even after a few days, I'm certain that the person who left can never return. The impact has already been so deep. It's damp under my tarpaulin now, and frankly, still quite unpleasant. I'm hoping that the sun will come out, and I'm looking forward to terrible heat. Africa does not do anything in the middle. As I talk to you now, I'm seeing a glimpse of sunlight and I could use the warmth. 4-0, out. This has been another episode of the Track Your Life podcast with Boyd Varty. Follow us on Instagram at Boyd underscore Varty, Twitter at Boyd Varty, visit Boyd's website at boydvarty.com or subscribe to this podcast in your favorite podcast player. Please rate and review this podcast so that more people can find and enjoy it.